the church. I just have one simple question. Does anybody believe that God is still able to do miracles? Just for the sake of effect, I want to ask one more time, just in case your neighbor uh, has yet to respond. Is there anyone that still believes that God is able to do miracles? I'm excited about miracles, but more than that, I'm excited about the God of the miracles. Is, is there anyone that is grateful that you have a relationship with the God that still performs miracles? And a miracle can happen right now. This is the moment where heaven and earth collide in an exchange called prayer. Everybody say, pray about it. Pray about it. Say it again, say pray about it. Pray about it. Every single life decision, pray about it. What school your kids go to, pray about it. Is this the right job opportunity? Pray about it. Lord, is this the relationship that you want me to walk into? Pray about it. Is this the relationship you want me to walk out of? Pray about it. Lord, what is the next step for my life? Pray about it. Should I buy that dress? Because I know it's a 12, but I'm a 16. Jesus, don't pray about it. Put it back. <laughs> Some stuff does not require prayer. It just requires common sense. First of all, good morning and God bless you. And it is time for prayer. And I want to encourage you. Uh, today, this morning, that as we go to the Lord for prayer, there is not one thing that God doesn't want you to come to him about. He is your heavenly father, your Abba father, your daddy God. He is intimately concerned with every aspect of your life. And we must understand that the power of prayer cannot be overstated. If you want to grow in your walk with Jesus Christ, you are going to have to have a developed, committed prayer life. I'm not talking about shower prayer. I'm not talking about prayer only on the way to work. But I'm talking about setting aside time to spend with God to get direction for your life, direction for your day, direction for your future. It always fascinates me that there are some of us who assume that prayer is optional. But if Jesus Christ is our high priest, our older brother, and our example, then that means we need to take his example as our example. And Jesus made no critical decision. In fact, he made no decision at all unless he went to the Father in prayer. In Luke chapter 6, we find Jesus preparing to uh, literally choose the 12 disciples. But before he did, the Bible says he called his disciples to himself. After he had prayed all night, he continued all night in prayer. Somebody say all night. All night. All now, night. many decisions don't require all night prayer, but this was a critical decision. And Jesus said, Father, before I make this decision, I need to spend some consistent, dedicated time in prayer. And when he had come out from all night prayer, he chose 12 disciples who would become the apostles and the foundational pillars of the church that we now stand in. And Jesus chose all 12, one by one. And in the scripture, it names each disciple. The reason why that's important is because I don't want you to think that you're just one of many to God. You are one of one to God. And you matter, you, right there, Susie, Julie, Tamika, Bob. God cares about you and your need. So don't think that God is upstairs just waiting for all of us to pray or just give them what they want. No, he cares about you. He created you and he wants to hear from you. One of the most interesting parts of the scripture is that Jesus actually chose Judas. And a lot of people were like, well, why would God allow Jesus to choose Judas knowing that Judas would betray him? What's amazing is that in prayer, the father said you need to choose him because even in that, I'm going to work out something for my kingdom. And so God will even give you instruction for your enemies in prayer. He will give you instruction for the thing that doesn't make sense in prayer. So this morning, what I want you to do is I want you to come with an attitude of faith and expectation, knowing that the God of heaven is not the God of history. He is the God of today right now, and he can meet your need right now in this very moment. I've heard people say, 
when they were in trouble, pray for me. I say, I absolutely will pray. And sometimes I've even said, it's the least I can do. No, no, no. Prayer is not the least you can do. Prayer is the best you can do. Because there's nothing greater than taking someone into the presence of the God who made them. So right now, we're going to do the best that we can do for your problem, whether it's a toothache all the way to cancer, it's all the same to God. Nothing is impossible for God. So right now, I would like for anyone who has a prayer request to get in the aisle and come to the front of your section as our prayer partners are getting in place. And I want you to be expected that the God of the Bible is the God of your problem. Whatever you have a need for, we're going to agree that God is going to meet and exceed that need. Lakewood. Let's pray.